Uh, Bobby Maximus here, here to do a live, here to talk to you about some fitness stuff. Anyway, the title of this live is we today are going to unlock the secrets of elite fitness. We are going to teach you how you can raise your fitness through the roof beyond any measure that you thought possible. And yes, it is 100% possible. I don't care who you are listening, whether you're an athlete already or whether you're 30 pounds overweight and you've never worked out a day in your life. Trust me, there is a path to elite fitness. Some of you are going to have to work a little harder than others. Some of you are going to find it more of a struggle than others. Like some people are just more mentally suited for this. Uh, some people are more resilient, but the path is there if you want it. So stay tuned on this video. And again, we will talk about what it takes to build an elite level of fitness. Now, <clears throat> as part of the video, I always do Q&As. Pardon me while I drink my pre-workout. I'm going to be uh, going to work out here in about, uh, at the end of this live, probably the live will be about 30 minutes. And then I'll go work out, but I'm drinking my pre-workout, getting ready to rock and roll. And so, again, we're going to talk. I'm going to reveal the secrets uh, to developing elite fitness, and uh, we'll do a question and answer along the way. Now, one thing I want to say to you, though, is uh, you you might notice by subscribing to my YouTube channel. By the way, please subscribe. Please give me supers. Please support me. The more that happens, the more I can come on here and help you. So supers, subscribe, turn your notifications on. I got to get better at telling you all that, but that is the key to making sure I come back. Now, you might have noticed if you followed me for a while that I don't do the production thing. Like, listen, I don't got fancy lights. I don't got fancy little graphics I can point to. It's not overly produced garbage. Like, I am so sick and tired of that in the fitness industry, honestly. Everything's about glitz. Everything's about glamour. Everything's about lights. Everything's about camera action, like all that stuff, man. I'm not into it. I just want to give you real advice that you can follow. Like, if there's anything that I'm known for, it's being the real one in the fitness industry. I'm 45 years old. I've never taken a drug. I've never taken TRT. I, I wasn't born with like some incredible genetic code uh, that allowed me to do stuff. Uh, if anything, like if you know about my background, and I've said this a bunch of times before, but a lot of people don't realize, I was bullied heavily until I was 15. I wasn't picked first on any of the sports teams. In fact, I was oftentimes picked dead last. First time I ever worked out, I got pinned under a 45 pound barbell. Um, this is just This is just who I am. And, and the real thing that allowed me to get better is just a relentless work ethic, just showing up day after day after day. I mean, I remember, man, when I was 15 years old, these three kids beat me up. They broke my collarbone. I didn't know what to do. I was scared. Uh, I needed a social network. I wanted to learn how to defend myself. And so I joined the wrestling team. The wrestling team didn't have cuts. They just needed bodies, you know. Uh, where I'm from in Canada, it's like you play hockey and then and then there's everything else. And so all the other sports suffer. And so um, I went to the wrestling team. Couldn't make any other team, by the way. Uh, I really wanted to play basketball. It's a whole other story, but I just wasn't coordinated enough, wasn't good enough. So anyway, I uh, went into wrestling. And every match my first year, I lost 40 matches in a row. Can you imagine that? Just losing and losing and losing and losing and losing again. But... I kept coming back. You see, that's the thing. I kept showing up. I kept coming back again and again and again and again and again. And then eventually I won one. Like my second year, I won one out of 40 matches. And I know that sounds pathetic to you, but man, it was like one of the best days of my life. I started working out. When I started working out, I got, I got pinned under a 45-pound barbell. And then I just kept showing up and working out more and more and more. And then eventually I, I, got, I got good. Like I got better just because I was so stubborn. I wouldn't quit, but it's not even stubborn. It's just, I didn't want to go back to getting bullied. Like, that sucked. It sucks, like, having girls not like you. It sucks having people punch you in the face every day. It sucks having people draw on your face with a marker. It sucks getting wedgied. Like, like it just, it's not fun, you know? And so I just kept going. And then and then look where I am now. Men's Health named me one of the 100 fittest men of all time. It was a huge accomplishment in my life. So I got to drink that shake. Uh, I've been in men's health probably about 200 times now, which is huge. You know, uh, my memory as a kid for men's health was uh, seeing it on the on the, on the, on the, on the, on the magazine shelf, right? So, so that's a big deal. I fought in the UFC. I won in the UFC. I won submission of the night in the UFC. Uh, 
you know, just tomorrow I'm competing in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu World Championships. So that's like awesome, you know? So like, I've been able to live this dream life. Uh, I have sponsors, I, I get to talk to you all on YouTube, like, and it's all from just not quitting. So you're also talking to somebody that's real and it's genuine and built themselves from the ground up. Like you, you can go listen to these people that were genetically gifted. You can go listen to these people that have been all kinds of drugs. You can go listen to these people that, that, that hide behind Photoshop and camera tricks and fake weights and stuff like that. But like, is that the person you really trust? The person with the glitz and the glamour and all the graphics and everything, the person that's trying to like sell you something like that's not me. So, so with me, you're always going to get raw. You're going to get real. Uh, and, 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 and that's who I am. Like, I almost shy away from that other stuff. Like if something's too shiny, I don't want it. You know what I mean? Like I want real, I want hard. I want, I want something that's really going to work. And frankly, like something that, that the dad in, 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 in the Midwest, who's, who's grinded away can take advantage of, you know what I mean? So on that note, uh, make sure again, you subscribe, you give me some supers, you set your notifications up. Cause you never know when I'm going to go live, right? I'm trying to do this once a day. Sometimes it's in the morning. Sometimes it's for my workout. Uh, but today you're getting a little pre workout Q and a, so let's talk about like what it takes to, to build an elite level of fitness. And a lot of this messaging for me, it's going to be the same because like, honestly, there's no trick. There's no shortcut. Like, like I wish there was some other way that, yeah, I just discovered the way that you're going to get fit in, in 20 minutes a week, but that's just not going to happen. Right? So, so a lot of the advice you're going to hear the same themes over and over and over again, but you really need to hear it. And, and here's the other thing, no matter how much advice that I give you, no matter how much I tell you to do the, the, the right thing, you need to go do it. Otherwise it's not going to happen. You know what I mean? Like you got to be the one that actually takes control of your life and actually puts it into practice and starts getting to work. So on that note, the first thing is, you got to start exercising. Like, I want to say workout, right? Like, I want to say you got to go to the gym, you got to pound weights, and maybe that's ideal. Like, yes, in a perfect world, you would be in the gym two hours a day, grinding, hustling, sweating, throwing up, like all of the things, like going to beast mode, but probably not realistic for you. And you got to remember, everyone starts somewhere. I talk about the fact that you got to work out an hour a day, but listen, I'm cognizant of the fact that if you haven't worked out for five years, going an hour a day, that might be a lot to bite off. Like that might be too much for you mentally. And as much as I, I want to tell you, like, dude, you got to suck it up. You got to just do it. Like you, like, this is your life here. Invest in yourself an hour. It's worth it. Man, some of you just won't do it. So here's the deal. You got to work out more than you're working out now. I'll leave it at that. I, I, I've talked about uh, how, how, how elite athletes train a thousand hours a year. Like a lot of you aren't training 20 hours a week. But if you haven't been doing anything for five years and you could just start with 20 minutes a day. I mean, if you just did one 20 minute session this week, you'd be better than last week, right? So I just want you to do more every single day. Now, more volume, that's the way you're going to get better. It's one of the reasons that 10,000 steps thing works because if you've been only getting 1,000 steps a day or 2,000 steps a day and you start taking 10,000 steps a day, you're going to increase your activity. Your cardiovascular fitness is going to go up. You are going to burn body fat. You are going to look and feel better and have more energy to do a hard workout later. So I just, I just, I just need more. Now that now there's different ways we can get more, right? Uh, in, in my book, Maximus Body for Men's Health, I chronicle the 130 hour rule. The 130 hour rule. What it says is if you work out an hour a day for six straight months, you'll see a body transformation. You'll see a massive change. And I really believe that that's how long it's going to take. That's the work it's going to take. Now, when I say work out an hour a day, what I mean is an hour of exercise, like an hour of walking, an hour of stairs, an hour of biking, an hour of push-ups, like an hour in the gym. Like you just need to do stuff for an hour a day. If you do that for six months, you're going to be on a really, really good path. Like I've seen people in six months, I actually have a guy in my gym. He's approaching the six month mark. Now he's already lost 45 pounds and all he does is show up an hour a day and actually not every day. He shows up an hour a day, five days a week. And he's, like I said, he's lost 40 pounds. So 
you can make an incredible change if you're willing to buy into an hour a day, six months. But, but say you can't. We got to start somewhere. So how about 20 minutes a day? Like, how about you just walk, right? Another story. I trained this woman in England, uh, corporate executive. Uh, she lost 80 pounds in six months. How? Every time she did a meeting, she was walking on a treadmill in her office. That's it. Like she was, she was walking like 10K a day, right? And, and you might not think that's a lot, but, but let's reduce it a little bit. Let's say all you did was went for a 5K walk a day. Five kilometers, it's about three miles. You listen to your podcast, you listen to this, where you go for your walk. It's going to take you like 45 minutes. So you got 45 minutes, right? You're just walking. If you did that every day for a year, you would hit 42 marathons. That's incredible. How many marathons have you done? So if you, you just walk 5K a day, you'll get 42 marathons. So here's, here's what I want you to do. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to just dedicate yourself to moving more. And, 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 and this week, if you haven't worked out in five years, I just want you to go once this week. Next week, go twice. The week after, go three times. The week after, go four times. And then once you're at four times, then you're just going to hit four, five, six, seven a week. You're, you're on your way. Uh, maybe it's you're going to walk around more. You're going to, you're going to get rid of the elevator. You're going to start taking the stairs. Um, maybe it's the fact that, by the way, I'm building you up from rock bottom right here, right? We'll get to the elite stuff, but I'm building you up from rock bottom. Maybe it's just every, 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 when you're at work, uh, like I'm sitting at a desk right now because I'm talking to you. I don't want all the motion to like drive me crazy. But, but you know, when I get up from my desk here, maybe I do 10 squats. And maybe every hour on the hour, I just do 10 squats. No wait, just 10 squats. Do you realize if I did that every day at work, if every hour I got up and did 10 squats, and I say I got 100 squats a day, I did 10 sets of 10 throughout the day. We'd never sweat, would never be tired. Ah, maybe I'd be a little bit sore the next day if I'd never worked out before. But by the end of the year, I'd have 36,000 squats. Have you ever done 36,000 squats in your life? Now I had push-ups to that, or sit-ups. Actually, sit-ups are too hard because you're going to be in the office, you're going to be wearing your suit or whatever you wear. So forget sit-ups, but, but you get the point. You do, you do push-ups and you do... Uh, you know, I actually know a guy at work who does push-ups on handles so his little shirt doesn't get dirty for meetings and stuff. But man, have you done 36,000 push-ups in your life? So like, you just start doing 100 a day of each of these things and you'll crush it. There's actually a workout. Uh, I'm going to Google it right now. It's called the uh, One Punch Man workout. The One Punch Man, he's uh, a Japanese superhero. Uh, it's, it's an anime show. Uh, and there's this workout that he does in it because he wants to get stronger. And so the one punch man workout is a hundred sit-ups, a hundred push-ups, a hundred squats, and a 10 K run. And he does this for a hundred days. Can you imagine like you did that? You would get insanely fit in, in a, like a short period of time, a hundred days. You would get insanely fit if you did a hundred days of the one punch man workout. So like, that's funny. People call it the Satama, uh, the Satama. I, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, workout routine. But can you imagine? That would be like an incredible thing if that's all you did, and it's super simple. So you can get work throughout the day. That's all you got to do. And I'm actually looking right now. There's all kinds of uh, videos here on the One Punch Man workout, which is I actually should do a little video on this because I think it would be, uh, I think it would be really, really funny to do a video on this. Um, but it, it would be a great workout. Like you would be way more fit than you are now. And it's funny. There's a, there's a workout. There's a, there's a, there's a guy named, uh, uh, Jeff Cavalier, uh, Athlean X, who's, uh, just did a video called the one punch man workout is killing your gains. But like, I, I actually respectfully disagree. Like Jeff's got a lot of good stuff that's out there, but like, if you were an absolute beginner, sure. Uh, people were talking about like stuff that kills your gains, but like if you're an absolute beginner and you just started moving towards this, you would get a lot more fit. Like if you're an elite bodybuilder, you start running 10 K a day, you start doing this, like, sure. Like that'll kill your gains a little bit. Right. But like, honestly, you need to do work and I'm sick and tired of people being like, oh, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Like get more fit by just doing stuff okay so so that's that's the first thing i'm gonna shut the socks and get distracted but um stuff like that makes me mad like just get to work that's the point that i'm trying to get across just start doing work 20 minutes here 30 minutes there even if you got to break it up 
even if you're like a dad and you, you got to wake up earlier in the morning, you got to do your push-ups and, and your and your and your sit-ups and your and your squats or whatever. And then at night you go for a walk with the kids. Like, if that's all you can do, that's better than doing nothing. Like, stop. The the enemy of what's that? What's that phrase? It's the enemy of uh, progress is perfection. And it's like stop trying to be perfect. Just start trying to get some work in. That's the single biggest thing. All right. Um, and so just start getting working every day. If it's twice a day, it's twice a day. If you got to break it up with whatever you got to do, you got to get more work in. What you're trying to do is you're trying to build yourself to a solid hour a day. And if it takes you a month to get there, well, that's worth it because you haven't done anything in five years. Like you've got to start somewhere. So if we can get you to a solid hour a day. We're going to be winning. Okay. That's the first thing. Once you're at a solid hour a day, yeah, that'll be hard. Uh, that'll be hard for a minute. And then uh, then you're, you're going to get there. You know what I mean? So that's that's uh, the, the, the thing. It'll be hard for a minute. And you'll get there. Then it'll be a habit. Then it's like you're, you're, you're on your way. If you can turn that corner, that's the biggest thing. But that's what we're working towards. And, and the, 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 the ultimate of that is an hour a day for six straight months. If you can do that, then you're really on your way. You will change your life. So whoever you are, let's start now. Let's start moving around. Maybe it's walking. Maybe it's the squat thing I talked about. Maybe it's the push-up thing I talked about. Maybe you can't do the whole one punch man workout and it's 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 a hundred squats and a hundred sit-ups and a hundred uh a hundred squats and a hundred sit-ups and a hundred push-ups and, 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 and a 10k run like that's a full one punch man workout. Maybe you're not doing that, but maybe what you're going to do is you're going to start with a uh, with 10 push-ups and 10 squats and 10 sit-ups and a 100 meter walk right or like a like a one kilometer walk and then the next day do a little bit more and the next day do a little bit more and then turn that walk into a run and then you you get the pitch and you build up but once you're at an hour a day for six straight months you're you're going to be in a much better position to just really really work and people talk about the 75 hard program. One of the things that I love about it is it teaches you that habit. And that's what a lot of you need. You need some real hard work. So that's, uh, that, that's important. Now we got some questions here. So we got warrior wisdom. I've actually done 36,000 press ups in the space of three months. I love to hear it a press up for my non UK people. Cause that's where you're from warrior wisdom. Uh, those are push ups here. Um, but yeah, that's, that's impressive. And like that kind of tenacity, that kind of dedication, especially I've seen you before from a, a 15 year old kid, man, you're, you're well on your way. You've got a great attitude. Now we got avatar daily fitness journal. You've chimed in before, uh, you've been rude before. Uh, you ask a lot of like just random questions. Like what's my Zodiac sign? What do I think about Mike Menser? Uh, do I take steroids? I'll answer your questions, but here's the deal guys. First of all, I'm here to help. So ask questions that can help other people. My opinion on Mike Mentzer shouldn't matter, but uh, ask questions that can help other people. Number two, if you're gonna take time up in the questions, give me a super, right? Like, like that's how I make money and that's how I'm here. Um, you get some of the best free fitness advice on the planet, real advice, like help me out a little bit, you know, and then subscribe and join in and tell your friends, like, like pump my channel, help me grow. You can do all these things. We're great. In fact, your fee for being here today, you need to email my profile to like your whole email list and just tell people like, Hey, go check this guy out. Subscribe. Now I am a Virgo. Uh, Mike Menser, uh, I think he's, you know, one of the great bodybuilders, obviously. Um, but I don't like the idea that's been, that's been put forward by Mike Menser followers that you can work out like 20 minutes, uh, five days a week. And you're going to like all of a sudden turn into a Mr. Olympia. Like it just doesn't work like that. Uh, there are people who can only work out 20 minutes a day and see shocking results, but they've probably put in hours and hours and hours and hours of work before that to build up the requisite intensity. Never taken a steroid, never taken TRT. I do take creatine uh, and I do use whey powder. So there's your questions. But back to the thing, the secret of elite fitness, like you got to start building up that volume. You know what I mean? Um, you have to start building up that volume. So if you can build up that volume and then once you get to an hour a day for six straight months, you are on your way. Trust me on that. So that's, that's number one. Like that's the number one secret to elite fitness. Number two, 
you got to challenge yourself. Like you can't just go. You see these old guys in the gym, right? They're 60 years old. They've been going to the gym for 20 years. I'm like, good for them. And they look all right. But like they never just take that pin and put it a plate down. Like you're on the machine. You're on the, you're on the bench press machine. You're always on a machine. Which, which, by the way, I like dumbbells and barbells better than machines because there's like a stability requirement. Like it's more functional. But they're always doing three sets of 12 at, at like number five. Three sets of 12 at number six, but three sets of 12 at number seven. Um, Nigel Black, belt librarian, comes through with the super and a question, and I got you, okay? Let me finish this thought, and then I will prioritize that. So they never really go beyond uh, 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 three sets of 12 at, at like number five or number six. Um, how are you going to get better? Like, you got to go to number seven. You got to go to number eight. You got to go to number nine. Like, you have to progress a training. Challenge yourself every day. One simple way to do that is today, try something you couldn't do yesterday. Just like even if it's one rep. So we talked about that one punch man workout. I'm actually going to do a video on the one punch man. But here's the deal. Uh, if you uh, uh, can only do the whole one punch man workout is 100 push-ups, 100 squats, 100 sit-ups, and a 10K run. You can't do any of that. So today you do five push-ups. Do five push-ups. That's it. Tomorrow, try to do six. The next day, try to do seven. The next day, try to do eight. The next day, try to do nine. The next day, try to do 10. Next day, try to do 11. Like, you understand what I mean? Like, you just increase the intensity. If you keep just doing five every day, you're not going to get better. Keep trying to go a little bit harder. Try to do a little bit more. Increase. Increase that volume, increase that intensity. So you got to go harder and it's got to be a little uncomfortable. Like, listen, it's going to hurt. If you've been on the couch for five years and you start moving, it's going to hurt. But like, get used to it. Like, you got to start challenging yourself. It's not going to come easy. Like, everyone wants Jeff Bezos money. No one wants to do the work Jeff Bezos did. Last drink pre-workout, which means our time is coming to a close. We've got about nine minutes left here. But let's... Uh, answer my man uh nigel all right another psychology question for you how do you avoid the pitfall of over complicating over padding your training for example strongman exercises uh like heavy carries or push presses are really fun but really don't translate to bjj so adding them in is just a necessary fluff that being said i never feel like uh, strongman has worked so I do these exercises at the end of my workouts while at the gym, which just leaves me sore. Uh, okay, a couple things. Now, first of all, you can go the complicated way, right? Like I know a lot of guys from West Side and they follow like this, this uh, it's a pretty complicated conjugate system. It's simple when you break it down, but it sounds really complicated and they put a lot into their programming. There's other people that are meticulous with their programming. There's a guy named Eddie Hall I had the opportunity to train with. And uh, Eddie Hall's training program is pretty simple. Uh, he's actually talking to me about his method of sixes where he'll do like six deadlifts, add some weight, do six again, add some weight, do six again, add some weight, do six again, and he'll stop when he can't do six. And like literally, Eddie's one of the strongest men of all time. He's the first person to deadlift 1,200 pounds. And that is just simple. Now, now, I'm oversimplifying stuff, but the point is sometimes simple is best. Like especially when it comes to fitness. Like you don't need a super convoluted fitness program Nigel Lake again now here's the next thing heavy carries or push presses I think they translate to BJJ like I think heavy carries and push presses which are functional I think they translate a lot better than a machine bench press or a leg press I think they translate especially the heavy carries like don't underestimate those I think they they translate a lot better than cable crossovers or preacher curls so like i actually i actually disagree i think those are super functional for bjj by the way the best exercises you can do for bjj pick one movement that's pressing and and that's like the more functional the better so like a floor press i think is probably better than a machine press uh a bench press with dumbbells or a one-arm dumbbell bench press is probably better than a two-handed dumbbell bench press so like a functional pushing one a functional pulling one and nothing beats the pull-up pull-up's great but a deadlift for a pull is great too like you want to build a big ass strong back and posterior chain the deadlift is is where it's at for legs i don't know if you necessarily need to squat because that can put a lot of stress on your back 
but Bulgarian split squats or, or single leg barbell reverse lunges or dumbbell reverse lunges, that's a great one for legs. Uh, and especially because BJJ ends up being like a single leg sport to a degree, right? Like almost every sport in the world is actually like single leg dominant. So um, um, like a good single leg thing like that. And then uh, arms, I don't really like work arms. I get arms through body weight stuff. So like some dips, some push ups, body weight stuff works great. But uh, the, 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 the carries you're talking about, the push presses, I think are great. Now, uh, let's talk about the soreness and like how hard you go. The real balance you're trying to strike is I don't even think it has to do with exercises. I think it has to do with balancing the needs of jujitsu or the toll that jujitsu takes on your body with, uh, with weight training. So like for me, I'll speak from experience. If I deadlift heavy and I squat heavy in a week, and I try to do a lot of hard sparring or rolling in jujitsu, like my body gets beat up. I'm 45 years old, I'm not on HTH, I'm not on TRT, I'm not on testosterone, like I just get beat up, like I can't do it. So the way I adjusted that is I deadlift lighter for form, right? We talked about this actually, I think I, I, think I gave you a workout to do three sets of 20 at 30% of your one rep max, but I deadlift lighter for form. Um, I, I replace the squats with the single leg stuff, like the reverse lunges. I haven't squatted in a while, but I do a lot of reverse lunges and then I can go hard in jujitsu. Now I could work it the other way because you got some like movement here, right? So, so I'm, I'm actively like taking a little off the top of my weights and intensity so I can go hard at jujitsu, but it can go the other way. You can like get your strength and conditioning in the gym. You can deadlift heavy and squat heavy, and then you can focus on technique in jujitsu because it's a technique dominated sport that would also work well. So you got a couple of options there, Nigel. I, I give you a really long winded answer, but I appreciate the super. Um, hopefully that, that kind of helps you, but you got two options. Like you back off the intensity. I would still do carries and push presses, but in big compound exercises, but back off the intensity a bit in the gym so you can roll hard in jujitsu or crank that through the roof. But then when you're doing jujitsu, you're not cranking that through the roof too you you got to go a little bit easier and that's like 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 anything in life right like you probably can't do two things great you could probably do one thing good and another thing good but you probably can't do two things great so you're going to have to go through periods of time where you're focusing on on one or the other now for me because i have world championships for jiu-jitsu on friday you know i've i've backed off the strength and conditioning stuff so i can really go hard in the jiu-jitsu gym not that i backed off i just go a little bit lighter does that make sense um, but, uh, um, when the off season, when this tournament's done, I'll probably go back to pushing the strength and conditioning. And then I will, uh, uh, you know, deadlift heavier, squat heavier, things like that. But then I can go back to a technique based jujitsu system. So just, just like, just as like a couple of, couple of things, like going into competing, you should prioritize jujitsu. And then in the off season, you can prioritize the technique part of it, if that makes sense. All right, so uh, what else do we got here? Uh, worry wisdom, not to flex, but I do five martial arts at home. Is that too much or not? I don't know, it depends how you feel. 15 year olds, man, they have gas tanks forever. Better than playing video games. You know what I mean? So so all the power to you. Um, thank you, Nigel, I appreciate it. Let's go win, you know? Uh, for us, any lower strength or mobility conditioning for jujitsu. Uh, for lower strength, I think Bulgarian split squats. Uh, what? Don't ask a general fitness guy about martial arts questions. You're right, Avatar. I'm just a general fitness guy. Uh, you know, the fact that I fought multiple times in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, the fact uh, that I won submission of the night in the Ultimate Fighting Championship, the fact that I won uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Masters uh, Worlds at every belt level, uh, the fact that I was ranked second in the world for IKF kickboxing. You're, you're right. I'm, I'm just a general gym guy. Gym guy. Get out of here, man. Um, all right. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, condition back to lower body condition. This guy, this guy with his trolling just, just, uh, just got me off track here. But anyway. Um, so lower body exercise for jiu-jitsu. I think Bulgarian split squats because it takes the stress off your back and single leg work is important. Reverse lunges. Uh, some posterior chain type stuff, uh, some hamstring exercises. If you can do Nordic curls, there, there's nothing better. Uh, a negative Nordic curl is still better than, than no day, Nord, Nordic curl at all. Um, some, some Romanian deadlifts, I think, are really good. Like, those are awesome. Then in terms of mobility, 
Um, but uh, in terms of the mobility, uh, you should get that all through jujitsu. So do your shrimping drills, do your wall escapes, do stuff like that, and that should be enough. All right, Dr. Fistface, each time I go heavy on squats, I hurt myself. My other lifts are good, but even after 30 years of lifting, my squats are where they were when I started. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any reason, especially, man, if you've been lifting for 30 years, you're an old guy like me. Like, I'm 45, so you're either that or a little bit older, right, unless you started working out when you were 10. But I don't think you need to squat heavy uh, ever again in your life. Like, I don't squat heavy anymore. I do heavy reverse lunges. I do uh, Bulgarian split squats. And, like, listen, man, I have monster legs right now. They're, like, 32 inches each. And, and, and a lot of it is not with the heavy squats. I would recommend single leg stuff all the time. In fact, there's been a lot of... Uh, Mike Boyle, when he was working with the Boston Bruins and the, and the, and the Philadelphia Eagles, um, the, uh, with the, with the Philadelphia Eagles, like he eliminated back sweats. He was giving guys all single leg stuff. And so I think, I think single leg stuff is the answer, Dr. Fistface. And, and, and that's okay. Like here, here's the deal, Dr. Fistface. You say your squats are pathetic. Don't put yourself down first of all, but I like the honesty. Um, here's the deal. What's your goal? Like, what is your goal? If your goal is to look good, you never need to squat again. Like, if you are a power lifter and you're focusing on the deadlift, the squat, uh, the deadlift, the squat, and the, and the bench press. Like, I'm, I'm losing my mind here. The pre-workout's starting to go to my heart. It's getting time to train, you know. But um, if, you were, if you had to squat in competition, yes, you have to squat to get a big squat. But, like, if you're just trying to look good, if you're trying to feel good, if you're trying to build sexy legs with like the teardrop muscle, right? Like above the knee, you don't need to squat. You can get it all from reverse lunges. You can get it all from Bulgarian split squats. And people hate Bulgarian split squats. They hate them. So don't worry about, uh, I wouldn't worry about it like with your goals. So so I would, I would really work up to some heavier and like big rep Bulgarian split squats, some reverse lunges. I'd worry about those. If you want a good, strong power lift, you can deadlift um, and then start going up. Now, if you're, if you're really unhappy with those numbers though, and just in your heart, you want to go up, uh, I'm going to recommend three workouts for you to do and you can waive the intensity. Week one, uh, do five sets of three at 80% of your one rep max. Week two, do six sets of two at 85% of your one rep max. You're going to rest about three to four minutes between each set for both those. Week three, five to six heavy sets at 90% of your one rep max. Take a deep load week, run it again, but go up by five pounds in every, every uh, workout. So say your five by three was at 300 pounds. Now your next five by three is at 305. And then the one three weeks or four weeks later is now 310, right? And you just go up a little bit again and again and again. So if you can do that, you will kill it. So Rich Neeks, my man, how are you? I've missed you, by the way. Thank you so much for the, for the super. Um, really, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm thrilled with this. So thank you. And I'll get to your questions in a minute. And I will do some stuff for you because you've always been a huge Bobby Maximus supporter. T-Dot, what's up? Um, all right, uh, one more thing, uh, Dr. Fistface, and then we'll get to Mr. Rich Neeks, actually a personal friend of mine. Um, but uh, for, uh, for Dr. Fistface, um, how many times a week? I would, I would focus on just two lifts, one upper body and one lower body. So like deadlift on Monday and like bench press on Thursday or Friday. Right, you could do uh, you could do uh, squat on Monday, and, and you could do uh, the overhead press on Friday. But just like a, a lower and an upper every three weeks, and you could switch it the next three weeks. All right, Rich Neeks, my man. First of all, for you, more programming for fifties plus masters, if you will. Uh, I got you on that. Um, it's actually something I'm going to explore. Um, you know, the big thing with master's training, my man, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now, like, like you, you live in that DJ life, right? Like not conducive to, to health and wellness. Like, let's be real. But here's the deal. Uh, as I've gotten older, like if I'm really vulnerable and really honest right now, here's the deal. Uh, 
uh, my workouts haven't changed much since I was 25 years old. Like I can still do the same stuff in the gym. The real problem is I don't recover like I used to. Like speaking very honestly, there used to be this bar in Toronto called Brand House. Uh, and this is starting, you know, this, you know, this is my man, but for, for the other people in the audience, man, I used to be out till like three in the morning. And I could wake up at seven in the morning. I could do it all again. Like I was young and spry and like nothing held me down. The testosterone was flowing, you know. Now, man, if I stay up past 11 and I have a little bit too much fun, I'm a write off for two days. Like it's hard for me to get back on track. So the biggest thing is recovery. So like, I don't know if your programming necessarily has to change, but I will tell you, you need more sleep. Like, and seven hours a night is better than six. Six is better than five. Five is better than four. Like eight's ideal, but you got to do what you got to do. Quality of sleep, you got to protect it. Like no screens an hour before bed. You got to sleep in like, I'm going to say about 67 degree temperature. Uh, have some warm feet, make sure the room's completely blacked out, but quality and time of sleep is enormous, okay? So so that's going to be big for you. Uh, three, no more processed food. Like, you're not even allowed to go to Burrito Boys if that's still a thing, you know? Uh, this is Burrito Place in Toronto, late night stop. And I'm sure you remember it. I'm sure you've been there a couple of times, like I have. Uh, but... Um, you can't even have that. Like you want nothing processed, everything from scratch. Like basically I want you to live off of, and this is next point to elite fitness and we can wrap up this call, but steak, chicken, and not, not KFC, not Popeye's, not like teriyaki chicken from the Panda Express, whatever, like real chicken, so real steak, real chicken, sashimi is really good like some raw fish like those are your three sources of protein okay if you're if you're if you're if you have access to it like white meat pork like a real pork chop like those are your those are your go-to's the next one is uh all right man the jerk chicken's fine the rice and peas you gotta limit you gotta think like this can you like go like pick a piece of rice off of a tree and eat it no it's got to take some type of preparation so rice is out. So you got the meat, you got the steak, you got the chicken, jerk chicken's fine. Another one with a little jerk seasoning. And you got, you got the fish, okay? Not fish sticks, fish. Now, the next thing that you're going to eat is a lot of red berries. Blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, like super high in antioxidants, nutritional nuts and bolts, really nutritional dense. You can have some avocado. You can have some arugula because it's, it's a green that's super easily digested or rocket. Some people call it. Uh, I'd, I'd prefer you to stay away from spinach and broccoli just because it's like it can be hard on your gut, right, with the amount of cellulose. Um, so like your diet is going to be chicken, steak, fish, raspberries, blueberries, strawberries, avocado, arugula, banana, super nutritionally dense. I'm fine with a good banana. Uh, bone broth. Uh, you can have some sweet potato. Again, though, that kind of falls in that category with rice, right? Like, you're not going to eat a sweet potato out of the ground and eat it like an apple. But but a sweet potato, like, you know what's a really good meal? If you have, like, a like a corned beef hash or, like, a, like a, like a, like a, like a steak, like a flank steak with some, uh, a little bit of steak, little bit of uh, uh, sweet potato, like a nice little horseradish sauce. Like That's hard to beat, man. You know what I mean? Or some salt pepper. Anyway, um, you get the picture, like limit it to like those 10 foods that I labeled off. You can do that. Man, listen, if you had 10 days of, and I did this once, chicken, steak, white meat, pork, fish, the three berries, arugula, avocado, banana. Oh, and then walnut or cashew butter. If you lived off that for 90 days, dude, you'd, you'd be waking up looking like shredded. You'd look like a shredded Bobby Maximus or like a, like a in his prime genuine. So there's nothing wrong with that, man. The ladies would love you. All right. Thoughts on AG1. Uh, Athletic Greens. Uh, I don't know enough about their manufacturing process to tell you if it's uh, good or not. Uh, the green that I trust is from First Form. Uh, that's the green that I like. 
Um, but, uh, and there are some other brands out there that are reasonable. Um, AG1, I'm not sure about their manufacturing process, but I will tell you as a rule, when, when companies are going public and they're selling stuff in the Costco and they're selling stuff on the cheap, I have some questions about quality. My thing is real food first. A supplement's just a supplement. Like, don't be relying on that to get all your greens. If you're having the avocado, you're having the arugula, you're having the red berries, and you're having the meat, you are getting enough of what you need. So I, I would actually, like, spend my money on other stuff. Greens would not be the first supplement I would recommend to somebody. I'd, I'd go with, like, a really good quality whey protein or fish oil first or invest that money into real food. So something to think about. Anyway... Everyone, uh, I, got, I got to get my butt to the gym. I got a flight. Uh, they're kicking me out of the hotel. I had to beg for late check-in. Uh, but I appreciate everyone's support. Rich Neeks hit me up. Send me a DM or a text. You got my number. And uh, I'll, I'll put together a little special program for you. I appreciate you. Um, and then, yeah, thank you for coming out. And, and thank you for working hard. And, and this was a great Q&A. &A. And, and watch for some more lives here. I'm going to do a live on the One Punch Man workout. I think that would be good. I'm going to do a live on like the perfect diet to get you elite fitness. Like I got a bunch of ideas and then, and then hit me up with ideas, the stuff that you want to see. Nigel, uh, black belt librarian. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate you. And then, uh, away we go. Thank you everybody. It's been a great live. Love you all. And, uh, Tron T dot. What's up? Oh, and rich inks. We really got to get Shoney or uh, to, uh, to Toronto, hopefully, signs with the Blue Jays. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that on the live because he might cancel us or whatever. Apparently, he's being pretty picky with who he goes to, but let's go. I mean, it's been like 90 years, 30 years, 40 years since the Blue Jays have been good, so let's go.